Hi, I'm Hillary Russo. Thanks for joining me for the Holistically Speaking Podcast. I'm a certified holistic health coach and havening techniques practitioner, lover of great conversation, and of course, clever wordplay, holistically speaking. So welcome to an empowering place where my guests share their transformational stories of trauma to triumph through health, healing, and humor. It's the ultimate brain candy as we find out who we are, how we got that way, and what it takes to be a happy and healthy grown-up. And be kind to your mind. I'm glad you're here. I don't know about you, but being betrayed sucks. Big time. And if you're one of the millions that's been through a painful betrayal, you know all the emotions and feelings that follow. But what are you doing to turn your betrayal into a breakthrough? Because it's more than just removing the toxic people from the environment, be it an intimate partner, a family member, or even a friend. No, it's doing the real inner work so that 20 years from now, you're not looking back at all that repeated behavior from unresolved trauma, asking yourself, why? Why does this still hurt? And why is your health, your work, and your relationships all paying a price? Dr. Debbie Silber has been there more than once. And as a holistic psychologist, founder of the Post-Betrayal Transformation Institute, and author of numerous books, including her latest, From Hardened to Healed. She digs deep when it comes to answering those questions about what's holding us back, what helps us heal, and what happens to us physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually when the people closest to us lie, cheat, and deceive. On this episode of Holistically Speaking, Dr. Debbie shares more about the five stages of healing that are essential for your well-being after betrayal. And as a bonus, she's even sharing her post-betrayal syndrome and trust again quizzes so that you can see where you are in your own journey. It comes down to this. Your biggest crisis reveals your greatest gifts. And you being here to listen is just the beginning. Dr. Debbie, joining us today on Holistically Speaking. Dr. Debbie, it's so great to have you in the studio and and joining me on Holistically Speaking. This is a really, uh, this is quite a treat because what you're sharing is a topic that I think a lot of people go through, both men and women. We all go through breakups and we really want to see the breakthroughs and you have a lot to share. So just thanks for sharing time on the show. Oh, thanks so much. Looking forward to our conversation. So you are the founder of the PBT Institute. You have quite a story yourself. And as you know, this uh, podcast is about your own traumas to triumphs and how it's changed uh, whatever is happening in our lives, those adversities we deal with and how we've overcome them and turned them into those triumphs. And before we even go anywhere, I would love for you to share a little bit about you and how you kind of got into this work, because I know your story is quite extraordinary. Oh, thank you. Well, I don't think anybody says, you know, I think I want to study betrayal. No, uh, this is actually my 30th year in business. And as life would morph and change, so would business. And uh, uh, so I started health and then mindset and then personal development. And then I had a really painful betrayal from my family. I mm. thought I did the work to heal. A few years later, it happened again. This time it was my husband. Blindsided, devastated. Anybody who's been through it, you know, they we know it, it feels awful. So I I got him out of the house and I I looked at the two experiences and I said, well, what's similar to these two? Of course me, but what else? And I realized, you know, boundaries were always getting crossed. I never took my own needs seriously. So I said, something drastic and dramatic has to change. So here I was, four kids, six dogs, a thriving business. I was 50 and I'm like, going back for a PhD. And it was in transpersonal psychology, the psychology of transformation and human potential. I was changing so much, I didn't quite understand it. And he was too on his own, wasn't ready to look at that. Uh, And then it was time to do a study. So I studied betrayal. What holds us back? What helps us heal? And what happens to us physically, mentally, and emotionally when the people closest to us lie, cheat, and deceive? That study led to three groundbreaking discoveries, which changed my health, my business, my family, my life. Mm. And, you know, I love how you bring it up. A lot of t- a lot of times we think about betrayal just being a partner, but there are many people out there, and, and I'm sure many of my listeners, that have been betrayed by family. 
it doesn't necessarily have to be your intimate partner. It could be a parent, a, a sibling, a, a cousin. And when we think about the fact that betrayal is not necessarily just an intimate partnership, it really opens us up to, to really do the work and try to go deep. And where does the healing begin? You know, where can we go from this? And um, I would love for you to elaborate on that. Yeah, sure. You, you know, I define the betrayal as the breaking of a spoken or unspoken rule. And every relationship mm. has them. And the way it works is the more we trust and the more we depend on someone, the deeper the betrayal. So for example, a child who's totally dependent on their parent and the parent does something awful, that's going to have a different impact than let's say your best friend sharing your secret, your coworker taking credit for your idea. Still a betrayal, different mm. level of cleanup. Mm, definitely. So how did you come up with this idea? I know when you and I talked and we had a really lovely conversation prior to this podcast, but we talked about how your your journey from 30 years ago, how you mm -hmm. kind of transformed into this, created this beautiful business where you're helping others in their healing process. And it was never, you know, you were, you were already in the holistic health world, mm -hmm. but you just kind of added on to things. And I guess in a way, we hear about people like, oh, you've completely changed your career. You've you've pivoted. That's a big word right now, pivot. But it seems as though you've added to your toolbox with everything you've done and your mm -hmm. own life experiences. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting because what we have within the PBT Institute, post Betrayal Transformation Institute, it is this combination of our certified coaches teaching daily classes and, and uh, our signature programs and a very unique type of forum. Mm -hmm. But we realized within there that full healing, complete and full healing takes healing physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually. So mm -hmm. none of what I had been doing in the past, it was actually a waste because anything that works, uh, we include, and it's all research-based. Whatever doesn't work just simply isn't in there. So the health component that I don't necessarily lead with now, that's a really important piece. I mean, sometimes I even use it just strategically where someone is, you know, they, they need to rewire their mind, right? Mm -hmm. to, to get out of this deep trauma they're in. So I may do something like, well, you know what? That 30-year sugar addiction you have, let's go break that. And then they're like, how'd that happen, mm -hmm. right? So I'm like, okay, well, if you can do that, what would happen if you change your, you know, some of your other thinking and your behaviors, or even with something like betrayal, where life is just completely chaotic and everything seems completely out of their control? Well, think about it. Something like what you eat, how you move, maybe the only things you have control over. Uh, yeah. And then to regain confidence and regain health. So, you know, we're using things to help healing just in a different way. It's not like to look good in your skinny jeans now. It's it's to really do a lot of other it's, stuff. <laughs> it's all about relationships, isn't it? I mean, it really it really is. When I ever I'm with clients that are addressing just so you mentioned the food issues, we have to have a better understanding and a love and a relationship for food as well. Our food with our bodies. It's it's a it's it is a relationship. It's a connection. So just like we do that with food, and a lot of times people do go to an addiction or some way to control. Um, you know, it's, it's being, a, it's a healthy relationship we want, whether it's food, whether it's activities, whether it's partnership, whether it's friendship, whether it's family. So I think of when we see it that way, as it's a collective and a whole, that's where we're really living powerfully, you know? Well, it's, it's interesting because, uh, for, and I, and I'm happy to go over the discoveries with you, but I'm just looking at one of the statistics, 47% of everybody who's been betrayed has some sort of, of um, weight issue. So here's where we need to acknowledge that. Like in the beginning, you know, you can't hold food down. Maybe later on you're using food for comfort. So there are so many reasons why we need to recreate a healthy relationship with food, with ourselves. And that, I mean, that is just a piece of it. Um, and, and that was just one of the stats that came up with the post-betrayal syndrome, which was one of the, that was one of the discoveries. We realized that there's this collection of symptoms so common to betrayal. It's now known as post-betrayal syndrome. What's so interesting is we've had, I don't know, 35, 40,000 people take the post-betrayal syndrome quiz. A few things about that. We've all heard time heals all wounds. I have the proof when it comes to betrayal. That's not true. 
there's a question that says, is there anything else you'd like to share? And people write things like, my betrayal happened 35 years ago and I can still, you know, I'm, I'm unwilling to trust. My betrayal happened 15 years ago, feels like it happened yesterday. So uh, betrayal is a very different experience. And I love that you're mentioning the post-betrayal syndrome quiz, because we actually are going to be posting a link to that in the Holistically Speaking podcast. Dr. Silver has given us the, uh, she's generously offering this quiz to listeners that you can download and take and send it back to her and just know where you kind of stand on this. Maybe it's questions you haven't asked yourself. Maybe it's things you just haven't really thought deeply about, like, oh, that connects with that. That makes sense. And it allows you to become more aware, because I think when we're in that first stage of awareness, that's where we can see the change. That's where we can start to develop. And that's where, like you mentioned before, we can change and retrain our brain because we do have that capacity. Of course, I mentioned that a lot with havening techniques. We have the ability to rewire our brain, but it has to start with the awareness first. So thank you for offering this to listeners. I have, if I'm going to take it myself, I haven't yet. I've been through betrayal as well. And I, I think when we have that capacity to really look back on things and take a moment just to be present and be open-minded to the possibilities and how we can empower ourselves, that's where we can really see the change. So thanks for that. Yeah, Of course. Thank you. And what's so interesting too is there are so many symptoms that we're walking around with that we attribute mm. to, oh, it's aging, oh, it's stress. No, it's not. It's your unhealed betrayal. I'm happy mm. to even share some stats with that. With that Please help? do. If I share it's always them. good. Yeah. Okay. So now, like I said, we've had, I don't know, 35, 40,000 people take the quiz. Every demographic, almost every country is represented. So 78% constantly revisit their experience. 81% mm. feel a loss of personal power. 80% are hypervigilant. I mean, that's exhausting. 94% deal with painful triggers. These are the most common physical symptoms. 71% have low energy. 68% have sleep issues. 63% have extreme fatigue. Those are your adrenals that have crushed. Like I mentioned before, 47% have weight changes. 45% have digestive issues. That's anything from IBS, Crohn's, diverticulitis, constipation, diarrhea, you name it. The most common mental symptoms. 78% are overwhelmed. 70% are walking around in a state of disbelief. 68% are unable to focus. 64% are in shock. 62% are unable to concentrate. So imagine you can't concentrate, you're exhausted, you have a gut issue, and you have to work, you have to raise your kids. That's not mm. even the emotional symptoms. Emotionally, 88% have extreme sadness. 83% are angry. You go back and forth between Sadness anger and, anger. and sadness. That's interesting, mm. right? Eighty-two mm -hmm. percent feel hurt. Eighty percent have anxiety. Seventy-nine percent are stressed. So here's why I wrote the book Trust again. Ready? Eighty-four mm -hmm. percent have an inability to trust. Sixty-seven percent prevent themselves from forming deep relationships because they're afraid of being hurt again. Eighty-two percent find it hard to move forward. Ninety percent want to move forward, but they don't know how. Mm. And you mentioned your book. Trust Again is already out. So you can actually get a copy of that. We're going to put a link to that on the podcast. And then you have the the newest one is the um, From Hardened to Healed. I love that right. title. I, and I mean, when, you know, it's any way we can soften ourselves and let things in, right? It's any way that we can really find the healing. And you're providing that with the PBT Institute, with your work as a practitioner, as a doctor. And uh, where what are your stages in your steps? You mentioned these five steps. You have the new book. You have trust again. But you also mentioned the five steps and the five stages. And I'm very curious about yeah. that. That for me, that was the most exciting of the discoveries. And, and I'll, I'll, I want to share the, the second discovery because then, mm -hmm. then the, the five stages will make so much sense. Mm -hmm. So it was post-betrayal syndrome. That was one of the discoveries. We also learned that um, healing from betrayal is very different than healing from other life crises, death of a loved one, disease, natural disaster. I had been through death of a loved one and disease. I was in the ICU for 11 days. But, but I was like, you know, betrayal feels different. I didn't want to assume. So I asked all my study participants and I said, if you've been through other traumas uh, besides betrayal, does it feel different for you? Hands down unanimously. They said, oh my gosh, it's so different. Here's why. Because it feels so intentional, we take it so personally. So the mm -hmm. entire self is shattered 
and has to be rebuilt. Rejection, abandonment, belonging, confidence, worthiness, trust. So it, it needed its, that type of healing needed its own name, which is now called post-betrayal transformation. Mm -hmm. So the five stages, what this was, I mean, in the geekiest way, I thought my head was going to fly off my body when this showed up, because what we learned was while we can stay stuck for years, decades, a lifetime, and so many of us do, if we're going to fully heal and by fully heal, I mean, symptoms of post-betrayal syndrome to that whole healed, rebuilt state of post-betrayal transformation, we're going to go through five now proven predictable stages. And what's even more exciting about that is we even know what happens physically, mentally, and emotionally at every one of those stages. And we know what it takes to move from one stage to the next. So healing is now predictable. So stage one was like a setup stage. And I saw this with every study participant, me too. If you can imagine four legs of a table, the four legs being physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual, what I saw with everybody was this real heavy lean on the physical and the mental and kind of neglecting the emotional and the spiritual. What does that look like? It looks like we're really good at thinking and doing and not really prioritizing the feeling and being, right? Mm -hmm. If a table only has two legs, easy for that table to topple over. That's us. Mm -hmm. That's not to say if you're busy, it's a setup for betrayal. It's just the profile I typically saw. Anyway, stage two, shock, trauma, D-Day, Discovery Day. And this is the breakdown of the body, the mind, and the worldview. So right here, you've ignited the stress response. You're headed for every single stress-related symptom, illness, condition, disease. Your mind is in a complete state of chaos and overwhelm. You cannot wrap your mind around the information you just learned. This makes no sense. And your worldview has just been shattered. Your worldview is your mental model, the rules that prevents chaos. Don't go there. This person's safe. This is how life works. And in a moment or series of moments, every rule has been destroyed. It's terrifying. The bottom is bottomed out and a new bottom hasn't been formed yet. So it's terrifying. But think about it. If the bottom were to bottom out on you, what would you do? You'd grab hold of anything and everything you could to stay safe and stay alive. And that's stage three, survival instincts emerge. It's the most practical out of all of the mm -hmm. stages. What do I do? How do I survive this experience? Who can I trust? Where do I go? How do I feed my kids? Mm -hmm. Right. But here's the trap. This is by far the most common stage to get stuck in. Here's why. Because it feels so much better than the shock and trauma of where you just came from, we think it's good. We have no idea there's a stage four and stage five. Transformation doesn't even begin until stage four. So because we don't know there's anywhere else to go, we start planting roots here. Four things start to happen. The first thing is we start getting these small self benefits. We get to be right. We get our story. We get someone to blame. We get a target for our anger. We get sympathy from everybody we tell our story to. We don't have to do the hard work of learning to trust again. Can I trust you? Should I trust you? I forget I'm not trusting anybody. So we start planting <laughs> some, right? So we yeah. start planting some roots here. Now, because again, we're here longer than we should be. Now the mind starts doing things like, well, you know, maybe you're not all that. Maybe, maybe you deserved it. Maybe this, mm. maybe that. So you start planting deeper roots. Mm -hmm. Now, because these are the thoughts you're thinking, and this is the energy you have, like energy attracts like energy. So now you're calling situations and circumstances and relationships towards you to confirm, yep, this is where you belong. The misery loves company crowd. They come around now too. Oh, it gets worse. So true. Get, yeah, right? It gets worse. <laughs> I'll get you out of here. Because it feels so bad, but we have no idea there's anything better. Here's where we resign ourselves. We're like, you know what? This stinks. I but I don't know what else to do with this and all these symptoms I have and how awful it feels. So right here is where we start using food, drugs, alcohol, work, TV, keeping busy, reckless behavior. And think about it. We do that for a day, a week, mm -hmm. a month. Now it's a habit, a year, 10 years, 20 years. And I can see someone 20 years out and say, that emotional eating you're doing, that drinking you're doing, that numbing in front of the TV you're doing, do you think that has anything to do with your betrayal? And they would look at me like I'm crazy and say, but that happened 20 years ago. Do you see? 
All they did was oh, put yeah. themselves in stage three and stay there. So that's why, while, while trust again is about the five stages, from hardened to healed is only for those in stage three. Because oh, that's found, a continuation. Yeah, yeah. Because we stay stuck. Is, because that's, that's where we stay. And I'm yeah. like, you know what? I'm coming for you, the stage threeers. <laughs> because that, and here's the thing. Even if it's not because of a betrayal, it could really be from a, just a set of limiting beliefs, from something someone said to you that you made it to mean something. And you put your, I'm not lovable. I'm not worthy. I'm deserving. What, you know, whatever it is, you put yourself in stage three and people stay there for life. So from hardened to healed is for those deeply, deeply stuck. And I'm talking, it could be decades. It doesn't matter. Stuck in stage three. It's like that saying, uh, if you always do what you always did, you always get what you always got or some variation of that. It's cyclical. We're stuck in that place. And I just had this really powerful conversation with a friend of mine who was out of a relationship, but just constantly attracting the same kind of energy and, Mm -hmm. and got into this place of addiction and got into the place of, of unwanting and everything that you're saying it we go to this place of distraction and distraction could be mm-hmm. so detrimental but you also mention that your biggest crisis also reveals your greatest gifts and i love that oh yeah that trauma to triumph as i mentioned you know so i'd love for you to elaborate and, and, you on know, that too it, yes and your friend is classically stuck in stage three it mm-hmm. is a, when when we have repeat betrayal and i'll share stages four and stage five a repeat betrayal is a sign of an unhealed betrayal. And what happens is we go from partner to partner to partner, friend mm-hmm. to friend to friend. And people say, what the heck? Is it me? Yes, it is. Yes. There's this profound lesson that is waiting to be learned. And until and unless you do, you will keep getting opportunities in the form of people to teach you that. The other way we see it is you, you put the big wall up and it's like, nope, no one's getting near me again. We think it's coming mm-hmm. from a place of strength. It's not, it's coming from fear. So in relationships, those are the two ways you could spot an unhealed betrayal. Mm. And it's so common. It's so common to go there and we think we're protecting ourselves or we think we're, we're, we think we are actually healing by being hard. You know, like you said, hardened to healed. We think putting up that wall or like, I don't have to deal with this or boundaries, boundaries, using the word boundaries, like it's, you know, just in every conversation. Mm-hmm. We Yes, we need to have boundaries and we need to know how to grow. And we need to be able to be aware and identify the signs. But we also need to know that love is abundant and we are we are on this planet to love. But when you go to the place of fear, oof, you know, that's a dangerous place to be. Definitely. That, yeah. And that's when yeah. we're hardened and, and mm-hmm. we have every right to stay stuck. We've been sure. burned. We've been, you know, we've been duped. We've been betrayed. I get it. But mm-hmm. life is waiting for you. When you move mm-hmm. through the stages and, and yeah. you know, you've been through the worst of it already. You owe it to yourself to heal. Anyway, if you're willing to let go of those small self benefits, everything you get from staying stuck, grieve more than the last bunch of things you need to do. You move to stage four. Stage four is finding and adjusting to a new normal. So here's where you acknowledge, I can't undo my experience, but I can control what I do with it. And I always use the example of if you've ever moved to a new house, office, condo, apartment. You don't have all your stuff there. It's not quite cozy yet, but it's going to be okay. And when you're when you're in that space, that mental space, what happens is you start to turn down the stress response. So you're not healing just yet, but at least you stop the massive damage you, you were creating in stage two and stage three. The other thing is, if you were to move, you don't take everything with you. You don't take the things that don't represent the version of you you want to be in your new space. And what I found was if your friends weren't there for you, you don't take them with you. Right here is where you've outgrown them. And people say to me all the time, what the heck? I've had these friends 10, 20, 30 years. Is it me? Yes, it is. You're undergoing a transformation. And if, if they can't rise with you, they don't come. You don't bring them. It's so very common. Anyway, when you're in this sta- this mental place, you're making it cozy. You're making it home. You can move into the fifth most beautiful stage. And this is healing, rebirth, and a new worldview. The body starts to heal. Self-love, self-care, eating well, exercising. We didn't have the bandwidth for that earlier. Now mm-hmm. you do. The mind is healing. We're making new rules, new boundaries based on what we see so clearly now. And we have a new worldview based on the entire experience. And the four legs of the table, in the beginning, it was all about the physical and the mental. By this point, we're solidly grounded because we're focused on the emotional and the spiritual too. Those are the five stages. 
Beautiful. Beautiful. How long did it take you to develop that? And are you going to say 30 years? <laughs> no, 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 no. Actually, from the time of my, and this is always a shocker to people, from the mm-hmm. time um, my betrayal happened, uh, it was September of 2015. Mm-hmm. By January, I was in the PhD program of 20, 2016. So January 2016. Yeah. So the the PhD, the three discoveries, the institute, all the books, all the TEDx's, all the products, the the all the certifications, certified coaches has all been since then. Can we just like stop for a moment and just be witness to the extraordinary betrayal to breakthroughs that you have actually created for yourself to let people know, to let the listeners know that there are so many possibilities for yourself. If you are in the struggle, if you are feeling the feelings that we're talking about, or even feelings we're not talking about, know that everything and anything you want to create is possible. You just have to be in that right mindset and know it and understand it and know there's support out there. And on that, I just want to mention again, we're talking to Dr. Debbie Silburn. She is the creator of the PBT Institute, the Betrayal to Breakthrough. She has two books, Trust Again, also Hardened to Healed. And she is here and she is sharing and it is a beautiful conversation. I'm so glad to have you here. Also, just don't want to say thank you so much to my friends over at Squadcast for creating the space to share this podcast. But let us move on. I would love to just, and also I do want to mention again, if you're listening, check the link for the post-betrayal syndrome quiz that Dr. Debbie is graciously sharing. It gives you an idea of where you kind of are. And then you can get the, the Trust Again book and bonuses by going to the other link that we will post as well. Um, so I want to uh, just touch on your own situation. You just had mentioned before prior to that, about your 2015 is when you dealt with your own betrayal in your relationship and how you were able to manifest and turn things over within the matter of, look, it's a, we're works in progress forever, right? We're constantly learning. But the fact that you were able to take that bold step when you feel so beat down, when you are so hurt after years of being in something with someone that you trust, where, if you were to give one bit of advice to people of learning to trust again, what would that be? You know, tr- trust takes time, mm. and in the beginning of a betrayal, you you know, it, it is so devastatingly painful. Getting out of bed may be a big thing. Yeah. So, so I, I just really want to acknowledge the idea of just keep moving forward. I mean, I had no idea what was going to show up. What I did find though, was we saw the people, there were three groups in the study who did not heal. So I was determined to not be one of them. So the first group was the group that refused to accept their betrayal. They just weren't having it. They had their story. They were sticking with it. The second group was the group that was numbing, avoiding, distracting. They ran to the doctor who put them on a mood stabilizer or anti-anxiety medication. They were numbing in front of the TV. They were emotionally eating. It may have made the day a bit easier, not without a price. The third group, this was the group where the betrayer had very little consequences. So whether it was out of financial fear, not wanting to break up a family, religious reasons, that was a big one. They just tried to turn the other cheek, put it behind them. I saw two things with this group a further deterioration of the relationship. And the second thing was this group was the most physically sick. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, but I get it. People are so afraid of that complete and utter death and destruction of the old, but that's the only thing that allows for the death of the new, whether it's a new just version of you, right? If, If it's not an option, to rebuild with that person. Like that's what happened with my family. Mm -hmm. So I just rebuilt myself and moved on. Or if the situation lends itself, if you're willing, if you want to, you may have the opportunity to rebuild something entirely. And I'm talking from the ground up new with the person who hurt you. And that's what I did with my husband. Um, As two totally different people, you know, not long ago, we married each other again, new rings, new vows, new dress, And our four kids is our bridal party. Uh, I could promise you never in a bazillion years would I have done anything like that if I wasn't totally different and for sure if he wasn't either. Um, But betrayal really lends itself to creating an entirely new identity. You, You take the parts you love, you leave behind everything that doesn't serve. And it will show you who that person really is or wake them up to who they temporarily became. I mean, when, when you think about it, 
it's crazy, but my biggest supporter now is my husband. He's your husband who you originally had a break up. Uh, yeah, we were and now you're back together with the same man. Uh, the that, same family, but we're all totally. This totally is fascinating. Him. That's it's, fascinating. And it can happen. And we do hear that it happens. But let me ask you a, a question about that with your husband. Has he gone through some of the programs within the PBT Institute? You know, it is so interesting <laughs> because what what I'm seeing from him, he it, it just studying, really studying him has been so fascinating to see. And this is what I share also in, in Trust Again, I believe I shared it. People actually... I was I was wary. I was like, wait a second, can people really change? But then I thought, well, well, I know I'm radically different than I used to be. So mm-hmm. who's to say that he can't change as well? And we see it. My kids see it. I mean, but it it takes it takes crashing and burning and losing it all. And I think from his perspective, uh, he was actually the one who told my kids. Mm-hmm. So there's something about sitting your four teenagers down. They're like, you did what? to mom, if anything is going to have you wake up and realize what's important, it's realizing you just lost everyone and everything you loved. Ownership. Ownership right there. That's what that is. And so that's it. Or there could just be a tremendous amount of shame and then someone just keeps keeps at it. Let me ask you that. What is, you know, and I, yeah, sure. again, another conversation I just had about this was um, mm-hmm. uh, a betrayal situation between uh a couple who have children and the couple were encouraged by their therapist to sit down with the children to tell them what yeah. happened. You know, I would never say, younger. yeah, I would never say what's right or wrong for, yeah. for any family because it's so, it's so different. I can only speak to my experience mm-hmm. where it was the best thing ever. And here's why they saw mom crash and they saw mom rise. You know, they, yeah. When we try to protect them from any hardship in life, they don't have any resilience. They don't. They don't learn resilience. Yeah. So, what better example with but with someone they love and trust? You know, where they can yeah. see, wow, this is. You know, mom's going through some hard stuff right now, and I was very honest with them. I didn't want to burden them, but I, I was. I'm always authentic and real. So I said, listen, I, I'm clearly not at my best right now. So you're going to give me, I, I need a little bit of grace, but I'm going to do the best I can. I love each of you more than life itself, but I am undergoing something I never saw coming and I'm just going to do the best I can. And what's so interesting is, you know, in any mom, any parent, you know, each of your children are so different. And it was really a question of spending the time with them and working with them in the way that they needed, mm-hmm. you know, and, and my husband did the same. He had to rebuild with with all of them. He didn't have to, you know, if he wanted them back in his life. That's what that was the work that was needing to be done. He even called on my friends and apologized. He owned it. Yeah, it's not just earning the trust back of the spouse or the partner. It's earning the trust back of everyone of that's involved in that relationship. You really need to think about things like that. And sometimes I, oh, I yeah. we don't, you know, and even in the little mistakes we make, we don't think of how it's going to impact other people, not just the person you're directly uh, connected to. So more power to that. And really, it, it's wonderful to see that you have this happily ever after the second time around, you know, it. We're different people. We grow. And I'm glad to hear that you have that. So there's always hope and always possibilities. Yeah. And it's it's fun now. Yeah. I mean, now yeah, we're all that. together. With these adult kids, we're, we're having so much fun. And I think there's also this element of we appreciate us, all of us. You know, mm-hmm. now we know what we've been through and we're making up for a lot of lost time. Sharing the story with you and the close, intimate, the nucleus, the children, the family, the friends, that's one thing. Making it public like you're doing right now, that's a whole different story. So in my mind, I'm sitting here going, there has to be some kind of a, um, a, you, you have to be on the same page. Like I'm going public with this. This is part of my journey. This is part of my story. It's part of yours. But there has to be a, a connection there because it's not just between the, the close knit group, you know, but this is part in the part of the healing. So how was he with that? 
Yeah, th- this is the stuff that gossip thrives on. Oh, totally. And I actually am a very private person. Yeah. But, you know, and I knew it. I, I said, well, he- here's what's going to happen. I know I now have not only, I'm the one who did the study, you know, so I know there's a researched, proven way to actually heal from this. So mm-hmm. I have the story, I did the study. And how do you keep that to yourself? Right. Mm-hmm. But I'm also very private and very and it's it's very personal. So when I wrote Trust Again, um, well, and, and let me back up, you know, any good coach has a coach. Right. So I remember in, in uh, meeting with my coach and here we were, it was like a bunch of us in, in the group on a Zoom call and everybody is in the little squares. So we're all going around. What's new with you? What's new with you? What's new with you? And it was my turn. And, and I was talking about the study and with the study, the study. And he stopped me and he goes, you know what, Debbie, stop hiding behind your effing study already. And I was like, mm. oh, wow. And I, and I thought, OK, you know what? Go big or go home and, and, and get your ego out of the way. The, you're you're going to have the haters, mm-hmm. but the people who need to hear this, that's that's who I'm after. And so when I wrote Trust Again and actually um, I did two TEDx talks. The first one was six weeks after my betrayal. I don't even know how I did that one. And the second one, um, that was really where I shared it publicly in, in that way. Uh, but then in Trust Again, I sat them all down and I said, guys, just so you know, everything, it's its all in there. My very vulnerable story and, and all of it. And, and I thought they were going to be like, oh, come on, mom. <laughs> you know. And uh, they were like, mom, you're going to help so many people. And my biggest supporter go. was my husband. Great. The biggest supporter. So. I mean, not to sound cliche, things happen for a reason, but you know what? Things happen for a reason. I think about the work that I do and where I am and how much more powerfully I am as a practitioner. Much of it is because of the the upsets and the traumas and the betrayal and whatever else manifested in my life that, that has made me more powerful and empowering and inspiring because I can hold space in a whole different way, in a way I never really connected with before. And I I think we have such, we need to own our stories. And it doesn't mean you necessarily have to be on a TED Talks and you have to be public. And I'm not putting that out there because people like to stay private and that is fine. But there's a space for us to share. So yay you and yay your family for making that powerful step and knowing that you are providing some serious space for others to to heal on their own. So I know that um, we need to wrap things up, but I do want to do a little game with you real quick. This is a fun game that I do with all my guests, and it's basically a word association game. And I'm just going to throw out a word to you. And what I'd love for you to do is just come back with one word that comes to mind. And this is just from our conversation. I don't rewrite the, I don't write these mm-hmm. down prior. So this is just uh, Dr. Debbie thinking quick. <laughs> Hardened. Healed. Healed. Transformed. Betrayal. Breakthrough. Discoveries. Life. Adjustment. Beautiful. Trust. Again. Breakthroughs. Always. Nice. Like that. Yeah. You have to think real quick, but sometimes not thinking is where it just flows, right? Isn't that how life is? There's so much opportunity. Mm. And and truly what I see is people are spending their time uh going over their story endlessly, Mm. endlessly, endlessly. And the best version of you is waiting, waiting. So, so taking all of your energy, you know, you only have a hundred percent of energy on best case scenario. And if you're taking 40, 50, 60% of that, you only have the remainder left for your healing. So Mm. for me, you know, it's just all about, okay, yes, it happened. And let's do something really good with something really bad. Love it. You couldn't have said it any better and closed out this conversation, which I truly enjoyed. I am talking with Dr. Debbie Silver. She is uh, the founder and head of the PBT Institute and such a joy having you here. You have so much that you're offering. Again, I want to mention the giveaway. You're giving the the quiz of the post-betrayal syndrome. You can also get a look at her book, Trust Again. All of those links will be posted. And she's got a masterclass with tons of unbelievable practitioners. And I say that because I am going to be one of them. (laughs) So I appreciate that. And it's just creating the space where there's healing. And that's really as simple as it is. We all have the power to heal and we all have the tools in our own toolbox. And sometimes we just need a little help. Yeah. So thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. 
You can find out more about Dr. Debbie and the Post-Betrayal Transformation Institute by clicking the link on the podcast page. And go ahead, take those quizzes. There's a link to download both and find out where you are on the journey. And if you're curious about havening and how it can help you heal, let's talk. Just visit hillaryrusso.com slash havening and book a call. The discovery session is my gift to you. I would love to support you by putting the power of active emotional well-being right back in your own hands. If you're in the New Jersey area on November 14th, why not just give Havening a try and join me at the Wellness Gala? I'm going to be giving away one ticket to a lucky listener. You can do that by visiting hillaryrusso.com slash thrivehive or the link on my podcast page and let me know you want to be my plus one. One lucky winner will have a chance to join me at the event that is filled with holistic health and healing speakers, practitioners, giveaways, and more. And of course, yours truly. And finally, if you know someone who might find this conversation valuable, consider paying it forward. It may help them find the support they need because together we're better. Holistically Speaking is produced by Alan Seals with music by Lip Bone Redding and recorded on Squadcast. Thanks for listening. Be kind to your mind and don't forget to laugh.